ho! Merry Christmas! Psst, it's me, Craig Taylor, and as always, a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. It's December, Christmas is on its way. Santa's very busy at this time of the year, so what he's asked me to do is to help him out by putting together a very simple video on five bushcraft stocking fillers for Christmas. And that's the purpose of this video. None of these stocking fillers are expensive, relatively speaking, when you compare them to sleeping bags or knives or axes or things like that. They're all relatively simple to find. They're all relatively simple to locate. They're all relatively simple to buy. You don't need a lot of money. You don't need a great deal of skill set to look for these things. So if you're thinking about buying something for somebody this Christmas, bushcraft related, this list might be a good place to start. And if you're asking for some gifts from Santa this year, and you want to, to ask for something that's relatively simple for the other people to find, this list might be a good place to start. Now, any good Santa knows how important it is to have a good team around him. I don't have a good team around me, but I have got two of Santa's little helpers to help me out in today's video. So, why don't we get on with this list and why don't we ask the first little helper, and I use the word helping loosely, to come in and to share the first of my Christmas bushcraft stocking fillers with us. This is a sharpening kit, Santa. Ah, oh, here's my first little helper. Thank you very much, little helper. Merry bye Christmas. Bye-bye. So, the first gift is a sharpening kit. Now, this is a specific sharpening kit that I bought from <laughs> Beaver Bushcraft earlier this year. I'm not suggesting you have to buy this one, but a good sharpening kit is worth its weight in gold. With this, I got some diamond lapping fluid, I got a double-sided diamond stone, and I got a double-sided strop. I'm not advocating that you should purchase this over another sharpening kit. What I'm suggesting is, that a sharpening kit is a very good, relatively cheap investment. So if you want to buy something for somebody, a decent sharpening kit could be a good starting point. If you wish to ask for a stocking filler gift from somebody else, Santa obviously, then again, a sharpening kit is a very good starting place. So that's the first gift out of the way. Pop that there and I'll pop it in the stocking later on. This is a map and compass, Santa. Ah, thank you, little elf, a map and compass. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Bye. So next on the list is a map and a compass. If you're a regular viewer of my YouTube channel, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate, a big fan of people learning map reading and land navigation skills. I would say that us, alongside some medical and first aid training, these are two skills that will stop you getting into scrapes in the first place and if you do, can very definitely help you get out of them. So, if you've never really taken a step into the whole world of map reading, land navigation and compass work, why don't you have a look in your country's National Geographic Mapping website, find out what the local map is to your area, get yourself a decent compass, pull the two together and you've got a very, very, very good underutilised in my experienced bushcraft skill set to set you off into 2019 and beyond. If you're looking for gifts for somebody, follow exactly the same advice, possibly look at investing in a decent map and a decent compass for your loved ones this Christmas. So map and a compass, relatively inexpensive. The maps are fairly standard prices. Compasses, they can go up from being very cheap and perhaps a little nasty to very, very expensive and burn a hole in your pocket. I wouldn't suggest going to either end of that scale, but looking for something perhaps in the lower third, perhaps the, the upper end of the lower third, getting yourself a decent map and compass. So let's put that in the stocking to be delivered later. Hello Santa, these are tree and plant ID books. Tree and plant ID books, you say? Now there's a good idea. Thanks little helper, Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Roasting in this. Tree and plant ID books. Now these are Collins ones. They're specific to the British Isles. Wherever you are in the world, there is a good chance that someone somewhere is publishing a book that relates to tree and plant identification for your 
geographic area. I've been a big student, a big fan of learning about tree and plants over the past couple of years and this is why. Most of the time if you're kind of sticking to the, the essence of bushcrafting then you are using the resources that you find around you. Very often, very often indeed, correct identification of the right resources can make the utilisation of them much, much simpler. So if you're looking for the right tool and the right tree or plant in the first place, that's going to allow you to harvest them and use them for whatever the intended purpose was. Clearly, in order to be able to identify them, you need to be able to identify them. These types of books, not necessarily these specific ones, but tree and plant identification books for your part of the world are a very, very good investment. And dare I say it once again, that's possibly an underutilised skill in the world of bushcrafting, most people tend to wear towards knives and axes and spending lots of money on stuff and perhaps overlook being able to actually utilise the resources that are around them through decent identification. Another good starting point. So I'll get those wrapped up, ready to be delivered on Christmas Eve. This is a metal mug. Well, thank you little elf, a metal mug. Merry Christmas. Bye. Whew. A metal mug. How simple a thing. This is, um, this looks like a Crusader metal mug, the type that would fit a British Army 58 pattern water bottle, but it isn't. It's actually a knockoff. It's a cheap imitation that I bought back in the early 90s from HM Supplies in Aldershot. That might make a few people watching this smile if they remember that place. It's a knockoff. It doesn't quite fit the, the, the plastic water bottle that goes inside it. It's ever so tight. Um, I can easily afford nowadays to buy a Crusader mug, but I just can't get rid of this. Look at that. I mean, that is a lived-in, well-worn metal mug. That's been around the world a few times and back again. I just can't part with it. They're relatively inexpensive, 10 to 15 pounds most, I would suggest these are. They're a great bit of kit. They allow you to make a drink, they allow you to make food. They're a water collection device. They can be used for, uh, for boiling water and purifying water. All sorts of uses of a black metal mug. And it's not something that you have to carry in addition to your gear. It's something that you're probably going to be carrying anyway in order to drink out of but it also doubles clearly as a cooking utensil as well as just a standard drinking utensil. So if you know somebody that likes going out into the woods, they like cooking out there, they like drinking out there, looking for a metal mug for them to take out, preferably one that's compatible with the water bottle that they have, although that's not always possible. But if you could get the two together, um, you'd make somebody a very happy man or lady on Christmas day morning. Black metal mug. Worth its weight in gold. Another one to add to the list there. So let's have a look at our final item on our bushcraft stocking filler list for 2018. Hello Santa. Hello. This is a water filling bag. Do you like it? Is it a water filling bag or a brown bag water filter? Brown bag water filter. Thank you little <laughs> elf. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. <laughs> you can't get the staff nowadays. So here we have a brown bag water filter. Regular viewers will know that I've been experimenting and playing around and, and having fun using this over the past year or so, but in actual fact, uh, probably more so in the last two or three months, it's really getting a hammering. Relatively simple piece of kit. It's a piece of very, very finely woven material that you fill with dirty or suspect water at one end. You allow that to run off to a safe runoff point where there's a stitch line, and then you collect the water that is draining out of the bag at this point here. It's a water filter. It has no moving parts. It has no mechanical aspect to it. It can't really fail unless you don't clean it or you puncture the bag. Unlike most modern water filters, mechanical ones, the more you use this, the better it becomes at doing its job, the faster it becomes at doing its job. Like I said, it has no moving parts, it can't really break, it can't really fail unless you don't look after it. There's nothing to go wrong out in the field and again, relatively inexpensive. For those of you looking at this thinking, that looks a little bit like the old army issue Millbank bags. That's because it is modeled very, very closely, admittedly by the designer on the British Army 
Millbank bags. It serves exactly the same purpose, undertakes the same um, science and the same theory to filter that water down prior to boiling it. So there is another and final item for the Christmas stocking filler list, a brown bag water filter. Let's drop that down there. That's it folks, those were the five items for this year's Bushcraft stocking filler list. Hopefully there was a little bit of fun involved in the video as well, you've enjoyed watching me. Admittedly at home, am I cheating? Am I not out in the woods? Well I don't know, there, there is a tree behind me, albeit plastic, and there is some holly there, albeit plastic, so hopefully you'll, uh, you'll enjoy this week's video, Deep From Inside Santa's Grotto. Thank you for watching us. If you've enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. If you think there's somebody in your network that might like to see this video, share it with them. If you think there's somebody in your network that might be stuck for Christmas gift ideas to buy you, maybe share it with them as well. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint, wink, wink. That's all from me. Thank you ever so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Question for you though. What wasn't on my list that you think is easily accessible, relatively cheap, has a really deep fundamental value to people that are going out and doing the sorts of things that we do in the woods. What would you have added with all of those criteria? Let me know in the list below. What's missing from my Christmas stocking filler list from your perspective? Let me know in the comments below. It would be churlish of me to, uh, to wave you all off without waving these two helpers in. So, it's a very, very Merry Christmas from... Finley. And a very... Evie. Merry Christmas from... Oh, Merry Christmas from Evie. Merry Christmas from Evie. All right then, guys, it's probably the last video these two are going to be in for 2018. So, Merry Christmas from Taylor Towers, and we'll see you all after Christmas. Cheers. Bye. Bye.